Hey you guys, it is so good to be with you again today. I am so glad you're at Summit Kids. My name is Pastor Christina and I am so excited because guys, we get to read the Bible together. We get to find out what it says because everything in the Bible is true. God had people write down everything that's in here hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago so that you and I could read it, we could learn what's true, and we could learn to hear God's voice because God actually wants to talk to you. So today we're learning that when you're not truthful, you lose trust. I want you to look at someone next to you and say it with me. When you're not truthful, you lose trust. See, here's the thing. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It's being truthful with our whole lives, not just when we feel like it. And when we're not truthful, we actually lose trust with other people. But when we are truthful, we build trust. So today, I get to tell you a story from the Bible that's true, but is a great way for us to look at things we should not do. I know, right? It's always good when we learn from the good examples that are in the Bible, but I'm also really grateful that God had people write down stories of when people messed up too, because we can learn from each other's mistakes and we can learn to make better choices. So today we're diving in to 2 Kings chapter five. In a time when the people of Israel and their king refused to follow God, there was a prophet named Elisha who chose to follow God wholeheartedly and called the people of Israel to do the same. Now, in the book of 2 Kings, as it starts, we meet a guy named Elisha, and he has a very trusted servant named Gehazi. Now, Elisha was a prophet, and that meant that his job was to hear God and to tell that to the people. Don't change it, but always say exactly what God says. Now, in the book of 2 Kings, we find out that God did some crazy, amazing things through Elisha. Like one time, God made the Jordan River separate. It parted in half so that Elisha could walk across it. My hair is like attacking me today. Then another time, God had Elisha tell this woman her husband had died and she needed a way to provide for her family. And so God made her oil in her jar last so that she could fill many, 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 many jars of oil and then sell them to take care of her family. And another time, God raised a boy from the dead through Elisha. And that's not even all. So crazy, amazing things. So let's jump in to 2 Kings chapter 5. Here's what it says in verse 1. Naaman, he's another guy we're going to talk about. Naaman was an army commander of the king of Aram. Aram was their enemies for Israel. So Aram and Israel, enemies. Okay. Naaman, he was very important to his master, the king, and was highly respected. That's because the Lord had helped him win the battle over Aram's enemies. He was a brave soldier, but he had a skin disease. In a time when the people of Israel weren't following God, he was still working. Whether in Israel or around the world, God is not limited to one people or nation. So, in chapter five, we find out there's another guy for us to learn about today. His name was Naaman, and he actually lived in another country, not Israel. And Naaman actually had a problem. He was a mighty warrior. His king loved him, but he had a terrible skin disease. Now, the Bible tells us that on one of the raids that the people of Aram, the soldiers of Aram made, they captured a young girl who lived in Israel. And, and she ended up working for Naaman's wife. And she told Naaman's wife that if only Naaman would go to the city of Samaria in Israel, that there was a prophet there who could heal him. 
What? Yeah. Also weird that this voice keeps interrupting us, right? That's fine. Okay, so Naaman goes to the king of Aram and he tells him, this is what the servant girl said. Can I please go? So the king of Aram was like, yes. And he writes a letter for Naaman to take with him to give to the king of Israel so that the king of Israel would know who Naaman was and why he was there. Well, Naaman gets there and he takes, the Bible tells us, he takes all of this gold and silver and 10 changes of incredible clothing, this amazing clothing, as sort of like a, a thank you gift to be like, thanks for healing me, right? So he gets there and he gives the king of Israel the letter. And here's what the king of Aram had written. I'm sending my servant Naaman to you with this letter. I want you to heal him of his skin disease. Right? <laughs> okay, the king of Israel read this letter and he was like, what? The Bible says he was so upset that he tore his royal robes. It was a way of showing how upset you were. I don't think your parents would like it if you tore your clothes because you were mad. But he tears his clothes because he's like, what in the world? How am I supposed to heal this guy? I can't do that. And he even thought the king of Aram's just doing this so that I'll fail and then he'll have a reason to attack me, to attack our country. In a time when so much hung in the balance, God still had a plan. If his people would trust and obey him, they would see God do amazing things. Now, the king of Israel, he knew the only way someone could get healed would be if God did it. It's impossible for people to heal other people. And as he was all upset, the Bible tells us that Elisha had heard about it. And he sends a message to the king and he says, send the man here. So Naaman and all of his horses and men and all their stuff, they make their way over to Elisha's house. And Naaman, knock, knock, knock on the door. And Elisha sends a messenger down to Naaman. He didn't even go himself. And here's what his message said. Go, wash yourself in the Jordan River seven times. Then your skin will be healed. You will be pure and clean again. <laughs> Naaman got so angry when he heard this. The Bible tells us that Naaman thought that the prophet was going to come down to him. He was going to wave his hand over Naaman's skin and pray a prayer. And then God would heal him and it would be all wonderful. But that didn't happen, did it? So he actually left angry. In a time when obedience mattered, a choice lay before Naaman. Will he listen or will he leave angry? Now. Naaman's servants came to him as they're leaving. And they were like, Master, if this man had asked you to do something really hard, something really mighty, wouldn't you have done it? Well, of course he would. And they were like, Master, he asked you to do something really easy. Don't you think it's worth a try? See, Naaman got angry and a offended because it didn't go the way he thought it would. So he listened to his servants and he decided to go to the Jordan River and dip in it seven times, right? And the Bible says when he came out the seventh time, his skin was clean and pure. It was like the skin of when he was a boy. And he was so excited because dude, that's exciting. He was so excited that he went back to Elisha's house to tell him, oh my goodness, thank you so much. Now I know that God is the only true God and I'm gonna worship him. And then he tried to give Elisha all the gifts he'd brought with him. Remember, gold, silver, so many clothes. But Elisha refused, he wouldn't take it because he knew God's the one who healed Naaman. Well, so Naaman promised he was only gonna worship God, and then he left to go back home to Aram. In a time when all seemed to end well, 
the story is far from over. Well, after he left, Gehazi, you remember Gehazi? He's Elisha's trusted servant. Gehazi decided, my master Elijah was too kind, too easy on Naaman. I mean, he's not even like one of our friends. So Gehazi decided he would run after Naaman and he'd get some treasure for himself. So he did. See, I told you. He ran after Naaman, he caught up to him, and you know what he said? He made up a lie. He said, oh, my master Elisha changed his mind. Um, we had some visitors come and, and he, needs, he needs 75 pounds of, of silver and, and two changes of clothes. Compared to what Naaman brought, it wasn't that much, but still a lot of money. And Naaman, he believed Gehazi, because why shouldn't he? And so Naaman says, no, no, you have to take 150 pounds of silver and two changes of clothes. So he gets it all, and Gehazi goes back home, and the Bible says that he hides it in the house, and then he went to Elisha. And here's what it says in verse 25. Then he, Gehazi, went back inside the house. He stood in front of his master, Elisha. Gehazi, where have you been? Elisha asked. I didn't go anywhere, Gehazi answered. So now, Gehazi lied to Naaman, and Naaman believed him. And now Gehazi is lying to his master, Elisha. He was so trusted, but he's lying to Elisha. And the thing is, the Bible tells us Elisha knew Gehazi was lying. And because Gehazi lied, and because he was taking what wasn't his, he was trying to get something because of what God did. Because of that, Elisha told him, Gehazi, you and your family after you are going to have the skin disease that Naaman had. And right then, from that moment on, Gehazi had a terrible skin disease, and so did his family after him. In a time when being truthful matters, you get to choose if you'll be truthful or not. Gehazi got money, and he got cool clothes, but his lies made him lose trust with Elisha, and he actually ended up getting this awful skin disease for the rest of his life. It's really not an example we should follow because even if our lies get us what we were hoping for, it's not worth it to lose trust with other people. I want you to remember that when you're not truthful, you lose trust with others. When we're truthful, we build trust with others. When we're truthful, other people know they can rely on us. They can trust us no matter what. And it's always worth it to be truthful. See, when you and I get to know God more and more as we read his Bible and we, we spend time talking to him, that actually makes you and me want to be people of integrity, want to choose to be truthful in what we say and do. Because that's what honors God. And that's what helps other people know they can trust us. See, God always shows us that we can trust him. Because even when you and I and all of us We've said and done wrong things. We've done things we shouldn't. We know we shouldn't even. But God still loves us. He still picks us. And he sent his son Jesus to come and take the punishment for every wrong thing that every single one of us have said and done so that we can know him, so that we can be forgiven and we can be in God's family. We call that asking Jesus into our hearts or salvation. So I have a question for you. Have you ever asked Jesus into your heart before? Have you ever decided that you want to follow Jesus? If you haven't, I would love to get to pray with you today. We're all gonna pray together. So bow your heads and say, dear God, thank you that you made me. 
and thank you that you love me. Thank you for sending Jesus. Today, I'm choosing to follow you. Will you help me to remember how much you love me, that I'm in your family, and that I can choose to be truthful and build trust with others. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, I love it when we get to pray together. I love it when we talk to God together because he hears us and he's with us. And if you ask Jesus into your heart, this is a big day. The Bible says all of heaven throws a party. So you're going to have a five second countdown on your screen. And I want you to jump up. I want you to celebrate and shout. And then when it hits zero, have a seat and we'll keep going. All right. First thing, if you ask Jesus into your heart, I am so proud of you. Will you tell an adult who's with you and will you have them let me know? If you're not in the room, you can have them email me at kids at summitpa.church. And if you're in the room, they can write your name down and they're going to give it to me. That way I can get you stuff that's going to help you learn more about God and follow him. Number two, are you ready for this? We have a challenge because we always have a challenge. Here's our challenge for this week. We're talking about being truthful because when we're not truthful, we lose trust. Will you think can you think of any time, even in the last week or last few days, when you haven't been truthful? Do you need to go and apologize to someone to tell them you're sorry for not being truthful? Because when we will be honest, it helps to rebuild trust. And this week, let's ask God to help us be truthful in what we say and do so that we can build trust with others. Can you do it? All right, I love you and I'll see you next time.